Hello and welcome to Time Series Forecasting. In this video, I'm going to show you an example in R using the four models that I talked about in my previous video. And I'm going to use the example of uh, marathon data, which contains the data of a winning time for the Boston uh, Marathon. We're going to plot this data set and uh, see that uh, there is clearly a non-linear uh, trend in this series. So we probably need to forecast uh, this data set using a non-linear model. And we are interested in uh, forecasting for the next uh, 10 periods. So I'm going to save my forecast horizon. Okay, the first model that I'm going to use is the linear model, which means we're going to forget about uh, this non-linearity in the model and fit uh, this model as a linear model and forecast for the 10 uh, time periods. Hence, I'm going to regress uh, marathon time in minutes on a trend only and then forecast for the 10 time periods and then we can have a look at uh, our fitted values and our forecast values based on uh, uh, the main values. As we can see here that uh, we are completely ignoring uh, the nonlinearity in the data and fitting uh, this line as a linear model and uh, our forecasts are showing that uh, this downward trend will keep on going and uh, we are expecting uh, a further decrease in uh, the number of minutes it takes somebody to finish a marathon in the future as well. But obviously uh, we see here that uh, the data shows a lot of variation in the early period of uh, time as compared with the later time period there is not much variation in the winning time. This means there may be some heteroscedasticity in the model and we may need to take care of this heteroscedasticity. And remember one way to take care of this heteroscedasticity is to take uh, the log of uh, this series. And a further advantage of taking the log is that uh, we may be able to transform this nonlinear model into a linear model. And the way to do that was uh, that we can use the box Cox uh, transformation and uh, use lambda equals zero. That will be our log transformation. And again, I'm going to forecast our model using the forecast function and the first argument will be our fitted model and the second argument will be our timing horizon and then I'm going to plot everything on the graph. There is not significant difference between the exponential model and uh, the linear model. The exponential model is giving us almost identical results as uh, we got from the linear model and it uh, seems like uh, the log transformation was uh, not enough to take care of uh, the non-linearity here. The next thing we can do is uh, we can uh, create two time breaks, one at uh, 1940 and the other at uh, 1980. And then we are going to create uh, those two variables that I talked about in my previous uh, video. And see here, this is exactly what I showed you earlier. My TB1 and TB2 columns will uh, introduce two nodes, one at 1940 and the value of TB1 is 0 before 1940 and then it's taking values of 1, 2, 3 up to 76 and similarly my other knot is introduced at 1980 the variable TB2 is taking on value of 0 before 1980 and after that it is taking positive values starting from uh, 1, 2 etc. And then what we are going to do is we are going to regress uh, our variable marathon on time period t and tb1 and tb2 and then we are also going to create some new variables those will extend these tb1 and tb2 after 2016. Remember we are interested in forecasting for the period 2017 to 2026 so we need to extend tb1 and uh, tb2 so we're going to introduce, for example, TB2 equals uh, 37 in 2017, 38 in 2018, and so forth. So we can uh, go ahead and uh, fit this model and also create uh, TB1 and TB2. Next, we are going to forecast based on our fitted model and using uh, these uh, data points that we created and uh, look at the results on a graph. So looking at this result, it is apparent that we are introducing one knot at 1940 and the other at 1980 and fitting the model in this fashion. The fourth way of uh, estimating a nonlinear model is to use supply regression and we are again going to use the SLM function and I'm going to regress marathon on uh, the cubic function of time 
So t means I'm regressing it on time and then the square of time and then the cubic of time. And then I'm also including the cubic functions of tb1 and uh, tb2 in the model. So let's go ahead and regress this and forecast uh, based on uh, t, tb1 and tb2 for the PDA 2017 to 2026. So see here, the cubic function is a little bit smoother as compared with uh, the piecewise regression that we regressed and it's following uh, the time trend pretty smoothly as compared with the piecewise regression. So these were the four models that you can use to fit the model and uh, all these four models are plotted on uh, this graph. The linear and exponential models, they are giving us almost identical results and predicting that the time trend will keep on going in the same direction. And uh, we got that the piecewise regression with the one not at 1940, the other at 1980, it is showing us a little bit uh, different forecast as compared with the other uh, forecasts. And then the cubic supply is much smoother as compared with any of the other regression and uh, following uh, the time trend pretty closely. And it's also showing us uh, a downward going uh, time trend. Now the problem with the uh, piecewise regression and cubic supply was that we had to manually introduce knots at 1940 and 1980 and sometimes it may not be very apparent from uh, the time plot of a data set uh, uh, at which point we should introduce uh, knots. The knots are pretty subjective in this case. To make our life uh, easier there is a function called uh, supply function that we can use and this function will pick all these knots uh, automatically so that we don't have to manually pick uh, these knots. So all we have to do is uh, use the supplying function and we can transform our data using log transformation and uh, plot uh, this data. So now we don't have to worry about uh, all these uh, functions and manually creating the knots. All we have to do is uh, use our data set and uh, use this function and uh, if necessary take the log of the data set and we'll get our results. So see here, this function is uh, following the time trend pretty closely and it's pretty smooth and it's giving us confidence interval for uh, the winning times for 2017 to 2026, which means that we do not see a downward uh, going trend for the future winning times. It seems like the winning times is gonna be pretty stable in the future as well. So this is the way that we can uh, estimate a nonlinear model using plain function and then obviously we need to test uh, the properties of uh, our residuals to see whether our residuals are uh, heteroscedastic normally distributed and uh, showing a white noise so it seems like these residuals from a cubic spline function are showing uh, almost normality they are white noise and uh, there is a slight uh, heteroscedasticity before 1940 there is a lot of variation in the winning time and uh, after 1940 the winning time is pretty stable so this is the way that you can uh, use natural uh, cubic smooth splines on a data set to fit in uh, a nonlinear model and uh, forecast based on uh, that model. You can either use the linear model, take the log of it to approximate the model as linear or you can use piecewise regression or cubic supply function. You can either use the knots manually or an easier way of uh, estimating a non-linear model is to use this natural cubic smooth supplies and uh, we'll get the results and then uh, forecast based on these results. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.